Hi, I'm the Tabletop Teacher, and in this video we're going to unbox half a brick of the new DC Comics Heroclix DC Rebirth. Thanks to the great folks at WizKids for sending me this for us to preview. In this set there are 16 common figures, 16 uncommon, 16 rares, and 12 super rares, plus a prime figure for each of those rarity levels, and 8 chase figures. I really love DC Comics characters, and we don't get many sets from DC, so this set is already extra precious for me. Let's see what we got. In the first booster, we pull common Rose Wilson, Commander Steel, and Superman from the Justice League of China, uncommon Mr. Terrific, and a rare Lady Vic. Ooh, she's got the only six of us trait we've seen in some characters in the Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls set. This is fantastic as it will give us more choices to build teams around this trait. What does it do? Well, if you have at least three characters on your force, those with the only six of us trait have stealth. If you have five or more characters on your force, those with this trait can also move through hindering terrain without stopping. And if you have exactly six characters on your force, those with this trait modify all combat values plus one. Note that it's the number of characters that counts here. You can mix and match characters from Earth-X who have the Sinister Six United trait that does the same thing and get some great teams out of this. She starts with very good combat values for 75 points with running shot, precision strike, and a special damage power that gives her a free action to choose to either be given a move action at no cost or make a range attack. She will be dealt one unavoidable damage after resolutions, but that can be worth it sometimes. In the second booster, we find Deathstroke, Cyborg, Wonder Woman, Uncommon Ravager, and a super rare Black Canary. This is a gorgeous sculpt, wow! Another throwback to the Harley Quinn set, Black Canary has the Bombshell trait that allows her to make a close attack by spending two Bombshell tokens. She gets those Bombshell tokens simply by making attacks, the attack doesn't have to be successful. Cool, but the next trait I really love, Rocking Live and Ringing Heads. She has Force Blast, but if you spend a Bombshell token, all knockback caused by friendly characters is doubled. And this will even work against characters that have charge or combat reflexes. A fully operational knockback like this can make for interesting strategies. I'm going to try and make a knockback focus team for sure with her. She also has a pulse wave variant, Jive and Whale, that gives an action token to each hit opposing character by spending a bombshell token. And she's going to be hard to hit with that super senses and shape change combo. A very nice 65 points figure indeed. In the third booster, we get Cyborg, Wonder Woman, Uncommon Deathstroke, Tempest, and a rare Raven. Very nice sculpt again. She has the Mystics and Titans team abilities. She can use the Teen Titans at no cost after being given a move action. Since she's a great taxi that can carry three characters that share a keyword with her, even flying ones, along with phasing teleport and stealth, giving her move actions is going to be the most common use of her powers. Add Perplex, Probability Control, and Support to this, and she's going to be very popular in Teen Titans, Monster, or Mystical teams. In the fourth booster, we get, oh, Earth Shattering Pool! Oh yes, the Murder Machine Chase, along with Jericho, Kid Flash in both common and uncommon versions, and a rare Superwoman. Where to start? The Murder Machine can target through one piece of blocking terrain and destroy it. With a running shot energy explosion combo, that's always handy. 7 range, 2 targets, 12 attack, ay ay ay. This is a monster. Well, he does have the monster keyword, along with robot, armor, and dark knights. His Alfred Protocol trait grants him knockback, plus, when he knocks out an opposing character, knockback damage doesn't count here, he can make another attack after resolutions. This can happen again and again as long as he knocks out an opposing character each time. Wouch. His second trait, Reckless Disregard for Life, is also amazing. After the murder machine hits a single opposing character with a close attack, he deals one penetrating damage to each other character that's adjacent to himself and the target. This means that unless the target was knocked back or something, it should get that penetrating damage on top of the attack. The murder machine can only do this once per turn. His third trait, we will not hide in the shadows anymore, modifies his defense up to plus three if he's occupying clear terrain while being targeted by a range attack from a character that can use stealth occupying hindering terrain. 
Yeah, these things stack and you can get up to plus three for defense. Add shape change and prob to this in his special damage power, and that makes the murder machine a very tough target. Playing him at 100 points and equipping him with the goblin glider seems like an interesting idea. And in the fifth booster, we find Deimos, Nightwing, Prez Rickard, Uncommon Veronica Kale, and a super rare Wonder Woman. She has the Ministry of Self-Reliance trait that other members of the Justice League of China seem to have. This protects her from perplex and probability control from characters that do not have the Justice League of China keyword. She starts with her Fang of the Green Snake special attack power that grants her Giant Reach 2 and Blades Claw's Fang, which is very useful along with Charge. She also starts with a special damage power that grants her leadership and probability control, and when she succeeds with leadership, the character she removed an action token from can use prob until your next turn. Now, if I understand her trait correctly though, that character won't be able to target Wonder Woman with prob, or with perplex for that matter if need be, unless that character has the Justice League of China keyword. The Justice League of China characters are going to make a fun themed team, but might be a little tricky to play with others. Well, that's it for part one of the DC Comics Heroclix DC Rebirth unboxing. Those five front boosters were absolutely amazing. Don't miss this set's pre-release events at your favorite local game shop starting April 3rd. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And as always, thanks for unboxing with me.